So today we're going to be doing an activity called Unplugged AI with Tic-Tac-Toe. And in this activity, we're going to learn a little bit about how an artificial intelligence system on a computer might learn how to play games using the simple game of Tic-Tac-Toe or Noughts and Crosses. G'day folks, my name's Charles Martin and I'm from the Australian National University where I teach computer science. So for this activity, all we're going to need is some pieces of paper and some pens. So tic-tac-toe is a really simple game that you play with pens and paper. You start with a board like this and there's nine squares to fill in. There's two players and each one has either a naught or a zero or a cross or an X as their mark and they take turns making marks in one of the squares. The idea of the game is to get three marks in a row. So in this example game, the player with the circles or noughts has won because they've got three marks in a vertical row here. Now might be a good time to practice playing noughts and crosses or tic-tac-toe a few times just so you remember how the rules work. So when you're playing noughts and crosses, you might have noticed that you had some strategies to do well or try to avoid losing in every game. Now humans are really good at playing games. We do this all our lives, learning since we were very young how to try to work with other people with some rules. So you might not have even noticed yourself using strategies to play tic-tac-toe. Many people have the strategy of starting with their mark in the center or in a corner at the start of the game to try to get into a good position to win. Now's a good time to play another game of tic-tac-toe, but this time I want you to think really hard about the strategies that you use to try to win the game. So now that you've thought about each of your rules, it's time to try to write them down. One simple rule that you might write down would be to try to start by putting your mark in the center. Now I've played a few games of noughts and crosses, so I've got four simple rules that we're gonna try to, to look at today. So these rules are, put your mark in the center if the center's available. The second rule is, if you have two marks in a row, try to get the third one so that you win the game. The third rule is, that if a corner is empty, try to put your mark in the corner. And then the last rule will be that if the corners are filled and the center is filled, try to put your mark in one of the other spaces on the side of the board. So these four rules are what we're gonna to use to try to play a game of noughts and crosses. Now the difficult thing here is to try to play the game using only these strategies that we've written down, not by inventing new rules on the fly the way that we normally would when we're playing noughts and crosses. So to play this game, I'm gonna invite my friend Sandy to come up and be the opposing player with me. Why don't you come in, Sandy? So we've got our four rules here. There's your pen. How about you be noughts and I'll be crosses and you can start with the first move. Okay, so Sandy put her first nought in the center and that means when it's my turn, I can't put a mark in the center, but I can put one in a corner square. So I'll put one up here. Okay, Sandy's put a mark in one of the corner squares. I can't put my mark in the center. There are two corner squares that are filled now, but I can still put a mark over here. Okay, now the center square is filled and all four corner squares are filled. That means my only choice is to put a mark in a side square. But luckily I've got the rule that says that if I have two in a row, I should try to get three. And I can see that I've got two X's in a row here. That means I can put an X in here and I win the game because I've got three in a row. Sorry, Sandy, <laughs> better luck next time. Okay, so this game was fun, but maybe we can add another rule so that Sandy doesn't lose. So what do you think? Maybe we need a rule in here so that if one player has, the other player has two in a row, then you get to put your third in that space to stop them winning. Put this one away and we'll start a new game. Okay, so Sandy's gone first. This time she's put a naught right in the center. That's rule one. So I can't see any other play having two in a row, but that means I can put one of my marks in a corner square. So I'll choose this corner with a cross. Okay, Sandy's put a naught in the bottom right hand corner. This means I get to choose one of the other corners. Okay, so Sandy saw that I had two crosses in a column 
and that means that following our new rule, she put a naught there to stop me winning. Now I can see that Sandy has two noughts in a row. That means I'm gonna put my cross over here to stop her winning. Okay, Sandy's gone down to uh, the rule saying to put a mark in a corner square, the last corner with a naught. Now I get to choose one of the other side squares to put my mark. I'll choose the top one. Okay, so in this game, neither of us has won. <laughs> well, noughts and crosses is a very simple game. So it's easy to make rules so that there's a stalemate or a draw with no, no winner. But it's interesting to try different combinations of rules that lead to one or other of the players winning. And it might be interesting to try with different rules for each of the two players. So you might have found it quite difficult to write down the rules and play exactly the way that the rules are telling you when you're playing tic-tac-toe. We humans are amazingly good at playing games. It's something we practice for our entire lives, starting when we're little kids, learning how to play very simple games. Computer scientists are inspired by the way that humans understand games and learn to play them. We use these, this interest in the field called artificial intelligence to try to help humans solve problems in the world. We're inspired by the way that humans play games to try to build better artificial intelligence systems. Computer scientists use some of our game playing skills in artificial intelligence to try to solve real world problems like helping robots navigate, helping self-driving cars to avoid danger, or helping to humans to handle really difficult problems in the real world like responding to natural disasters. Now that you've written down some rules for tic-tac-toe, you might like to try, try a harder game. You can try to build rules for connect four or four in a row, which is a little bit more complicated to play, but has much harder rules. So that could be an interesting challenge to try. I hope you have a lot of fun learning about artificial intelligence with tic-tac-toe.